welcome to Making Mindfulness Fun. So in this series, we're talking about how each Enneagram expresses anger. Now, when people type, a lot of times they think that they are part of the anger triad, an eight, nine, or one. But everybody has an element of anger within them, even if you're a different Enneagram member. And so we're gonna shed some light on why you might be having anger and try to encourage that anger is a really healthy emotion in the sense that it lets you know where your desire lays, lies, okay? Because everyone feels anger at times. That doesn't mean you're an eight, nine, or a one. In fact, in this video, we're talking about why type twos tend to get angry and what they can do to diffuse that anger. But anger can be your friend if you use it to step back, practice mindfulness, and think, what is the desire that I'm really wanting right now? If this is your first time to our channel, here at Making Mindfulness Fun, we help you on your journey to higher consciousness so you can experience more joy, love, and emotional liberation. Before we get into the content though, please make sure you give this video a big, big, big thumbs up. Make sure that you also subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on post notifications because every day we're putting out a video in this series on anger and mindfulness, uh, anger and anagram. So please make sure you turn on those post notifications so you know the second the video comes out. All right, type twos, you tend to give, get angry because you give so much and you drain yourself and you have nothing left for yourself, but deep down you get angry because you're like, oh, why isn't somebody giving back to me? Why am I not being validated? Or why isn't pe aren't people paying attention and giving me enough kudos for how hard I am working? Yes, for sure. Um, as a story to go along with this, if you're type two watching, we have my dad or your husband, my Robin's husband is uh, a type two. And it's a, what? Sorry, <laughs> go ahead. It was cute. It was no, I gotta cute. start over. Okay, um, my dad, just my dad is fine. Sorry. So our dad, my dad, our dad is a type two. And he is um, not technically in the anger triad. He's in the shame triad, but these motions play heavy and play, which Gabby's gonna get to in a minute. But it's crazy to see, he would think that he's in the anger triad because when he gets uh, tired, his first thing he goes to is anger. He, after working maybe long days or especially when we're on the road traveling, it can be very tiring and draining and he goes straight to anger. And it could seem like he's in the anger triad when really it's because he, what he feels deep down is as a type two, he's going around being the helper. And if you're a type two, you can relate to this. You're going around with the biggest heart, biggest heart chakra ever, going around just giving to people endlessly. Like here, let me help you, let me help you, let me help you, let me serve you, what can I get you? And then at the end of the day, maybe if you don't practice self care, you just feel drained you feel exhausted and you go home and maybe people just don't meet your expectations they are not the type two that you are to other people and so you feel frustrated thinking why can't anyone reciprocate the same love that i do and this can cause a huge amount of anger and resentment to build up for type twos because it is nice it's good to have those expectations of people if they are expressed it's good to have expectations of hey i want to come home and i want to feel relaxed i want to feel at ease i want to have dinner made if you express those things, that's important, but sometimes we can let those expectations go unchecked and not express, and it can leave you feeling like, oh, I expected this, but you didn't, I didn't tell you, but I still expected it, so you're just, you just suck, and now I'm angry, and we want to just notice that as a type two, <laughs> but it, it's really huge for him. Yeah, so the other thing to talk about, and we're going to talk about this with all three types in the shame triad, but the thing with shame is that we generally try to avoid that emotion. In general, shame is something that we repress and avoid, whereas anger is generally a more accepted subject. Because, And the reason for this makes sense. Shame is the feeling of I'm unworthy. So if we recognize that, then we start feeling more unworthy. So shame has to do with unworthiness, but it also has to do with feeling invaluable or not good enough or unlovable. And for type twos, I think unlovable comes up more often. So whatever the emotion that you're feeling of shame, we try to avoid it. And so instead of feeling into that, we, which would require a sense of vulnerability and total love and acceptance for ourselves and understanding that, yeah, I am dealing with shame. That's my, that's my journey that I'm overcoming. Instead of trying to feel into that, a lot of times we try to put up the shield of anger. And Isabel talks about this a lot in all of her inner child work. Um, and um, anger is often a shield for our more vulnerable emotions. Anger is a much easier defense mechanism than feeling like we're not enough because feeling like we're not enough and recognize that, recognizing that 
usually leads us to feeling more, more of that emotion, which kind of brings us into a downward spiral. So it's important for type twos and, and all the other types in the, this uh, shame triad that we'll talk about later, it's important for them to realize, um, to almost create this barrier between this is my shame. I'm, I know we always say that to name your different personality, right? So it'd be like, I'm going to, uh, in some ways, objectify that emotion that I'm feeling. And that's not to say that you shouldn't feel into it, but you have to have this gauge in your own mind because otherwise it just leads you in this spiral of I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable. And you have to be able to recognize that and almost have this preset framework that, okay, this emotion's coming up, I'm gonna work through the, this I'm gonna work through this emotion in this preset way that I've already come up with. And you can check out ways that we do that with a um, link in the description for all the um, different uh, frameworks and methods of mindfulness to work through that shame. But you do have to have this path that, to work through. Of, I'm feeling unworthy, I, my immediate reaction is to go to anger, but it's okay, I need to feel into this emotion and work through it. So the easiest, most tangible way for you to um, catch this, because like she said, a gauge, but even an energy gauge. So. Um, finding out that root emotion, but catching yourself before you get drained. You know, a lot of type twos, you you feel everyone else's emotions and not necessarily yours. And as much as we want to say like, hey, just journal as you're starting to get tired, it's very unlikely that you would even set aside enough time for yourself to do that. So instead, as if you are driving your own car and you see a fuel gauge, uh, you probably need to keep track of that, like on a, on a journal through your day, 9 a.m., my, my fuel gauge is at seven, uh, 10 a.m. I'm already at six and a half. Uh, it's something as systematic as that because you're feeling out, you have to add a layer of systemized uh, to yourself because you're not going to feel into, ooh, like I'm, I'm feeling like I need to lay down and get horizontal and read a book for five minutes. Or I feel like I'm, you have to add layers that are um, tangible, like I need to eat a healthy fat at 10 a.m. because my energy level gets so low and I just tend to overgive even though I know I will start getting hangry soon. Yeah, I think that's a great way. And also I'd add on to that, like I said earlier, the expectation, the unnoticed expectation, I think that's a huge one for type two specifically, is writing out like what your dream day would be like. Write out what is your expectation for the day? How do you expect it to go as a type two? Like, oh, I wanna give from people at work from this time to this time, but when I come home, it would just make me so happy if blank happened. So writing that out and also pondering if that is a realistic expectation, I think will be extremely powerful for type twos. So if you like this video, please leave a comment below and tell us if you relate to this or share it with a type two friend who you think needs to hear this and stay tuned for our type three video.